what we found is that I can push you without you feeling the pressure. In fact, that's the whole idea of this, is that because of the way the lever works, if I put you really close to the fulcrum, you don't feel the pressure build up. And if the pressure builds up, that means you are resisting. So my, if I feel pressure, it means my push is not working. I'm trying to make it work, and I'm trying to overcome the resistance by being a bulldozer. That's the bull's butting heads idea. What I'm trying to be is like a hot knife cutting through the fog, so that when I push you, you cannot resist. If you make yourself really solid, strong like bull, smart like tractor, and I push, I feel the pressure build up, then you can resist. But if I have that centripetal geodesic, or really, show, really low shear modulus, really low surface area, and I diffuse your resistance over space and time, then when I move you, that does not require force. You are right on the fulcrum, and when I pivot, there we go, that's it. So you can resist, and you're connected to the ground. So as soon as I push, it connects through your body, it connects to your feet, there. So I'm bouncing off the ground when I push. So what I want to do is intercept that pressure, good, and then I can move you. But when I move you, it works because you can't feel the pressure build up. You know, people talk about practicing a technique against a non-compliant opponent. So you, you know, self-defense technique number one, go ahead, grab my wrist. Right? And I go, aha, now you're sorry. But if you resist and you don't let me do that, I can't do the technique properly because it doesn't work against a resisting opponent. If you are resisting, then it's the wrong technique and I should do something else. You can't rely on my force to provide you with proper information about what's happening. There you go, nice, that was good. So this is why when Tai Chi is done really well, it looks fake. Also, when it's fake, it looks fake. So <laughs> there's a problem with the, the, the Tai Chi. And sometimes people will fake it even though they don't think they're faking it because they get so accustomed to being thrown without force that they just start programming themselves to be thrown without force. And then all you have to do is point at them and they go, yeah, there we go go flying across the room for no particular reason. There, there we go, there. So here, what's happening is that I am trying to feel what you're doing by feeling force. So as you push, and I go, oh no, I have to resist, you get underneath me, now my resistance is counterproductive. I end up pushing myself away. And you use less and less force as I start to move. So you reduce the surface area, that's it. Well, you were on top there, you can get a little more underneath it, so a little, Little lower. There we go. That's it. There. See, it's effortless for you. So now, since pressure is no longer a good indicator of what's happening, in fact, if I add pressure, that just confuses you like that. So if you are pushing me and I add pressure, then that just gives me something else to confuse you with. So that's why we need form practice and why we need solo practice, because now we have to practice by ourselves learning how to feel the relationship between the bones and muscles and connective tissue and tendons and feeling how all that connects to the ground. So when we're doing the form and when we're standing, we want to feel as though we're a string of pearls balanced on end. And we learn to tell what's happening by what's happening within our own bodies. So if you feel yourself losing balance and changing shape, then you relax and you correct your own posture. There we go. And that takes care of it. That was good. That's weird. <laughs> yeah, and, and it's difficult in the beginning to get used to because you, you, the first thing that you think of is, I didn't do anything. Well, that's the whole point. So shoulder down, elbow dropping. There we go. So when you start to feel this, go back to your solo practice. So you feel that, you feel, there we go, connected to the ground. Now you're using force. Okay. Now you're connected, now you're using force. Connect more, more, there we go, there. That's it, good. So now you're moving me without force. And then when people say, oh, he's moving, now I use force so I can feel what I'm good doing. And it becomes counterproductive. Because what happens a lot of the time is when people use a good technique, it causes the other person to move and they think, oh, they're going that way. And then they add effort in that direction. So they start to conflate the pressure that they feel when they throw the person with what actually threw the person. So 
you start to move, and I think, oh, he's moving that way, and then I push. And because you were off balance, you moved. But I think it was because I pushed you. Mm -hmm. But it wasn't because I pushed you, it was because you were already off balance. So I should just practice keeping you off balance. There we go. More relaxed. So you're, you're doing a technical thing there. And that's from the judo. Connect more to the feet. Let your feet connect to it. Don't try to push me. Just, there we go. You find the mechanical advantage. You increase the efficiency of the machine, and the machine takes care of it.